<laughs> we just wait. We smile for a while, and then we say, hey, everybody, welcome to the Indie Show. Um, <laughs> it's so funny, Cindy. I, I, the way that this technology works is I never know exactly when it's going to start broadcasting. Yeah. So we'll see on the replay when it decided to start. But yeah. hi, everybody. Welcome to the Indie Show. I'm so, so excited today to have Cindy Scott with us. Cindy is a live event painter. And that's mostly what you do, right, Cindy? Yes. Yeah. Um, right now, and- it's, um, it's not so much heavy wedding season. So I'm doing a lot of commission work during the week. But you know, mid-March, late March, things pick up for sure and wedding season will be on. So yeah. It's so cool. I mean, I've seen her work and she's going to be pointing to some of the work behind her in a little bit. Um, but but she, I mean, Cindy, I think it's so cool that you are making a living off of this traditional, you know, painting type of form where you are right now you're hearing a lot of like starving artist stories around being an artist and particularly around painting. Um, and so I'm so excited to kind of dig in to how you're building a profitable business around this. And I think that the way that you're doing it is awesome. I think we've talked a little bit about like how you're, you're offering a service at the same time that you're marketing. I just think there's so many cool things about what you're doing and you've been doing it for two and a half years. Yep. It's been about full time for two and a half years. So yeah, the first one was maybe close to three years ago, but there was some lag time in there. I didn't think that there's any, real need to pursue this or to figure this out. So, um, but you know, somebody somewhere keeps trusting me to do this and show up at their parties and just paint. So I just plug in and try to figure it out. Thank you. I think it's so awesome. So let's, let's go back to kind of the beginning of wherever you say that your story with, Mm -hmm. with two rooster starts and and, and what's the name of the business? It's two rooster artistry, two rooster artistry. That's the full name. Um, And 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 you're doing mostly, weddings yes Uh, yeah mostly weddings there are some corporate events and fundraisers and galas that happen um, on non-wedding days but it's weddings are full-time all right cool um so yeah tell us a little bit about how your your adventure into painting and life painting started yeah it was not my idea i had (laughs) no idea this world existed um i've I've known this family for years now, and they've traveled lots of cool places, and they see all kinds of crazy things on their trips. So they come back to me, and they say, hey, we saw this in an airport lobby or a museum wall or on in some event we attended, you know, on one of their trips. So we come ba- they come back home, and we figure out a way to make it happen in their home. On one of their trips, maybe 2014-15, they saw an event painter on um, you know, working at an event they attended while they were traveling. And um, he was getting ready to have a customer appreciation luncheon, I believe it was. And he wanted something else going on. So there was an author that was there talking about her book. And then he contacted me and said, I want you to paint during lunch. And I thought he was crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, artists always like to kind of hole up and work on something for weeks and revisit it after some time passes and maybe finally unveil it once they feel like it's done. But it's, this was not that this wasn't a lunch, you know, maybe two hours if people have the time to linger. And, um, but it worked. I had some, you know, we talked about what to do ahead of time. I had some local landmarks, just images Mm preloaded on my iPad and I just collaged those together and painted as fast as I can. I loaded it in somebody's trunk at the end. The person that had the gold star on their plate or something won the painting. It was probably still wet, <laughs> but they took it home and it was, oh that gosh. was the first one. So my gosh. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so we talked before we went live about um, one of your first uh, times doing the live painting that, that you were asked to work on a canvas that was much bigger than what you normally are doing now. Was that the very first time that you were asked to do one of those? Yeah. At a, at a wedding. Jeez. And I just let them pick the size. I mean, I didn't have any experience yeah. to even guide them at that point. So sure. <laughs> we were actually at a meeting in a hotel lobby talking about this project and there was a TV monitor on the wall and they said, I don't know, maybe about that size. And I eyeballed it and I thought, well, that's probably a 24 by 36 canvas. So let's just do that. Having no idea you know, what it would take to fill that up during a wedding. So, so it was how big? 24 inches by 36 inches. So, <laughs> Jeez. so yeah, yeah. So that was the first one. And the first one, um, uh, you know, I, I honestly had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I 
I don't know. I won't say their names because I don't want them. (laughs) Anyway, I get, I show up probably two or three hours before the event. I get the backdrop in place. Of course, at that point, the event and venue staff is still setting everything up and overhead lights are all on and stuff. I didn't anticipate, oh yeah, once the party starts, the lighting changes. I didn't see that coming, you know? Yeah. And, um, I thought in my head I had to get the entire room and get it all academically in place perspective wise and angles right and and every single table I tried to get every single table in there so every guest had a place it was insane so that one I worked until I was just kind of blurry visioned and just my head was a little swirly and the party was well underway definitely time for me to scoot so I packed up my little canvas and my kit and I just kind of went home going I've got to figure this out this cannot this cannot be. <laughs> and I worked on it at home for another 10, 15 hours ish. I don't even know. So that was your first one. That was the first wedding. Uh, yeah. All right. So yeah. real quick, someone in the comments, Veronica, just asked if this was live. Yes, it is. If you guys have any questions for Cindy, feel free to ask them in the comments. Um, Cindy, I want to make sure that everybody kind of has an understanding, um, not just of like the overall topic of what you do, which yeah. is like the live event painting, but I'd love for for everybody to, to kind of see what the finished product looks like. I know you have a few pieces behind you. Would you mind grabbing one of them? and like? Yeah, let me see if I can... Get them with you guys. This this here. is so cool, and you can go to. I think it's is, is it two rooster? Is that your typical um, social media handle on like Instagram yeah. and things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two roosters. T o o r o o s t e r. You guys so, check her stuff out because it's amazing. But here's so this one. So this is something that you painted live. Yes, this one. Um, I was at a wedding show in Kansas City. And, um, you know, kind of what people mostly show up for is the fashion show at those things. So that's when you get a lot of the crowd in there. It was so cute. There was a little couple of vendors um, that one guy came over and grabbed a girl that was working at a booth. And they just started dancing in the aisle. And I thought, well, that's fun. I need to add that in there. Um, you know, it's not one moment captured. It's, it's a lot of different things going on yeah. all at one time. So, and that's that's what I hope to for a wedding is that I'm capturing a little bit of everything that's going on, really telling the story of the event of the occasion. So in a case like that, you know, the, it was the fashion show that I was kind of capturing, but you know, there was people whispering in the crowds, people pointing at dresses they liked or didn't like, and, you know, uh, pictures being taken on phones and, you know, lots of, in the painting, there's a lot more people on stage than so there was cool. at one time. So you know, I'm not limited to the lens of a camera. So I, I Okay, just... I love I love it because and I'm sorry I get when I get excited <laughs> I tend to interrupt people. No, um <laughs> but I, I think it's so cool because as much as I loved our wedding photographer, shout out to Gerber Scarpelli yeah, yeah. out in Chicago. They're amazing. Sure. Um, um I love what you do because what you just said, it's more than a photo. And um, I wish that I would have known about what you did when, when we were still engaged because Give we decided. Pictures. I can pull oh. from photos. <laughs> when you're Great idea. Watching. Everybody yeah, yeah, yeah. let them know. Ooh, my five years coming up. I mean, yeah. That'd be That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I say that because mm-hmm. my wife, Kat, and I decided to have a videographer in, a, in addition to our photographer and we love that video footage so much because it's more than just a still and the way that even though what you end up having as a final product is a is a static thing like you said you're able to tap into multiple moments yes that's so cool yeah and that's been so that's what's taking um taking up my work time now is painting from photos doing commission pieces for people so you know, I'm in the Midwest. Wedding season is spring through late fall, mm-hmm. you know, and the weather's good. Um, and so wintertime, not so many weddings. My first year, full year going through this, I thought, oh, wintertime's going to die. What am I going to do? Am I going to have to get yeah. a part-time job or whatever? But that's when fundraisers here kick in. And then, you know, Christmas time. I mean, I, I totally underestimated my first Christmas season. So people thinking of this for mm-hmm. gifts. Um, yeah. People just trust me with some of the craziest things they see me working on site somewhere. And, um, I mean, they see a girl holding a paintbrush and they just trust me that I can paint whatever. So it's been pet paintings. <laughs> it's been like their kids hobbies. It's been, um, gosh, paintings for grandma's 80th birthday party and all the cool places she's traveled. It's nuts. 
so over Christmas time, my, my husband's um, birthday is early January. So over Christmas time, had all the kids together, you know, and they always kind of curious what I'm doing, but mm -hmm. they're kind of like, oh, there she goes again off to work. You know, it's like I, I'm working bartender hours, you know, I get sure. all gussied up and my face done and stuff. And I am off to work on a Saturday afternoon. I'm sure that the rest of the world is just kind of like, there she goes. My neighbors are probably thinking <laughs> I'm crazy, but. Anyway, so I got the kids together around the holidays and I'm like, let's do something for your dad, you know? So painting from photos, this is, this is an example of what I did for, sorry, daddy. Okay. Okay. So someone, this was a, a, a still that you were given or, or, or were you there and you painted this? No. So this is me and my husband and our three guys. Oh, that's you. Yeah. So... So yeah, so our wedding, we did, we were second time around for both of us when we got married mm -hmm. and um, did a lot of DIY stuff. So we didn't have real, you know, a huge variety of photos and stuff. Sure. Um, and then the kids, I mean, Savannah's on her phone a lot. So that was an image that, you know, <laughs> I'm just coll collaging a lot of different things. That Is that a selfie? Personality. Yeah, totally. I love it. That's what she's all about. You know, Ryan's up there in his uh, softball jersey and Alabama hat. And so Russ and I in our wedding attire. And then Tyler loves basketball. And so our pets are in there. Uh, Russ played football in college. I don't know if you can see that. So got a little football oh, cool. field back there with his high school and yeah. college pendant and stuff. So that's a good example, hopefully, of uh, what can happen, you know, when you're taking a variety of different things, combining yeah. lots of different personalities, but you want something in one piece that can go that's kind of a crazy look you know that may not work in everybody's home but in an office that would be so cute or you know yeah room or whatever so yeah well and i can just hear my sister-in-laws who are 10 years older than me all with kids right now being like oh my gosh all yeah. of my kids eyes could be open yeah i know <laughs> like exactly I mean, I but can that's so 20 cool. pounds lighter, whatever you want, you know? <laughs> that's awesome. So so let's go just a little bit into kind of your technique. And you talked a little bit about how when you do your live stuff, you, you get there, you know, before the event really starts. So you're able to kind of map out some things. Um, it's interesting because on the one hand, it's painting. So I assume if you like make a mistake or something, you can kind of paint over it yeah. or something like that. But at the same time, like this is kind of your first and only draft at getting it right. 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 Exactly. Um, and I've, I've learned. So that very first painting that took so, so long, I mm -hmm. wore out the event. I was exhausted and it was, it was, uh, should be wrapping up by then. But, um, you know, so I, I learned from there and I thought to figure this out, I have to go somewhere and I have to work where I know there's a lot of moving targets and I have to work where the elements are unpredictable. So I yeah. set up at our local farmer's market here and I just tried to figure it out. I mean, lots of people, nobody's sitting down at a farmer's market. They're strolling, they're shopping, they're chasing their kids, whatever. Um, and then I had a friend that had a shop downtown. So during their little sip and shop events, I would set up there and just again, trying to figure this out. So yes, it is the first and only draft and I have yeah. learned, you know, some tricks going along. So I exaggerate the perspective academically. This may bore a lot of people, but for the creatives, um, I just, I, I exaggerate the perspective a little bit so that I can get a really kind of a, not fisheye lens look, but kind of, you know, just yeah. really deep in that space on the canvas so that I can get some stuff way off in the distance and get some things way up close and then somehow leave room for the couple. You know, usually it's during yeah. the first dance that they want to be plopped in there. Sometimes it's just greeting their guests. Sometimes it's snuggled in during a toast. But, you know, that first stuff is going on there. And, you know, I just kind of adjusted as needed. So, Well, can I just say that, like, you obviously have a talent that can't just be, like, paint by numbers repeated like i i know enough of artwork from like my high school classes to know that i'm not good but that it takes a lot of work when it comes to like shade and perspective and yeah. lighting and making sure that like everybody that's in the painting or whatever it's coming from the same vantage point and being able to do all of that and and so quickly i i think is just so fascinating so so let's talk a little bit about we talked before we went live about some things and one of the things I wanted to come back to was 
it seems like you've really figured out a way to make this a business that works for you. And you've gone through some lessons learned that have helped you kind of pivot and change your services so that it's easier for you to do a great job and give the client what they need. Can you give some examples of of what you've learned in the past two and a half years and some things that you've done to improve both the the final product and also just like your own procedure? And Yeah, you know. I, I kind of can, but I kind of can't because every single event is so different. Yeah. You know, so there is a general way that I've learned to start. I use a deep profile canvas. I paint those edges first so that has a chance to dry so anybody toward the end of the event can pick it up and transport it. You know, it's just oh, technically that's, that's just something. so smart. Is that something that you had to learn the hard way or yeah, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of times I have the bottom of the canvas that's not painted, you know, and I'm like, oh, oh so yeah, yeah. Just, just some of those very basic things and they seem so common sense now that I'm saying them out loud, but, mm-hmm. but maybe not. I mean, I, I didn't think of it at first. So, um, you know, and then, and then just getting started with the, the lines of the room and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the first few events too, I think I was trying to be nice to everybody that came up and had a question for me and I would spend too much time talking. I'm like, hang on a second, I'm here to work. So reframe this next time I'm, so this is my job. So I had a little sign that I made and it said live painting in progress, (laughs) you know, and so little things like that. And, sure. and my setup, you know, um, I, I want to make sure that I, if I'm having to park a couple of blocks away and lug my gear into a hotel lobby or whatever, then I'm, it's streamlined as much as possible. So I check in with the venue ahead of time, make sure that they've got a bar stool if possible, a cocktail height table if possible. Nice. So that stuff I don't have to bring. And, um, you know, just, just kind of communicating, I think, and planning um, and, yeah. and preparing. There's been a couple of times I forgot my palette, you know, so I'll borrow a paper plate from the venue and that was oh, really? stupid. <laughs> like, I'm I'm, is is the palette, stuff. is the palette really like better than a plate or is it, <laughs> is it just the look? It makes you look legit. If you can, the thing with the hole in it, like, yeah. <laughs> then you're really an artist. <laughs> Right, <laughs> but I like I've got this really cool. I don't know if it's like pewter or like an antique silver platter. It's got this really beautiful embossed pattern on the edge. To me, it's like a wedding piece. So it's yeah, you know, it's perfect for that. Now, <laughs> it's I, and, brand. I and think. I've it's never perfect. actually studied one of those palettes before. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I, I I know because of like the emojis and stuff that have them. Yeah. Are are there? I, I, it assumes unless you have like a huge one, you have a limited mm-hmm. number of colors that you can put on that thing. So are, are you doing a lot of color mixing during yeah, the live events? Yeah. I probably also have about 20, 15 to 20 colors squirted out. And that's okay. the thing too. I mean, I've learned what paints work and what colors work. Mm-hmm. And when the lights go down and you've got the crazy, you know, like hot pink and purpley up lights in a venue. Sure. Um, oh my gosh. I, I've learned really immense amounts of stuff and I don't really think about it until I guess I'm talking it through with somebody so yeah it's kind of nice now you know to look back on on the past couple of years and um you know feel like I'm heading somewhere <laughs> and it's no working, it's so. it's really <clears throat> cool I mean we, we we've talked quite a bit about the the artistic and creative mm-hmm. side of the business. Let's talk about the, the business side of things. And we don't have to get into like the nitty gritty details of it. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I love that you told me about before we went live was that you're, you're marketing while you're performing it and offering your service. Is, are you finding that you're getting a lot of your bookings and things from people who are at previous events? It, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like it's a super, I don't know. It feels like it's very rare. You know, marketing is always this huge abyss. Where do you start? Where do you invest? How long till you see a return on your investment? Mm -hmm. All of that stuff. And um, when I'm working, my target market is all around, you know, so, and to find your target market, if you're having to pay for your advertising, what, where do you pour the money into what who's your where is your market looking to find people like you in business so that's that's also kind of blown my mind I mean I'm super super fortunate and I know 
you know, I know it's not common to be like this. So when I'm working and mm-hmm. it's a paid job, my target market is all around. So if I'm at a wedding, you know, the, the couple's friends who are either getting married in the near future yeah. or have gotten married recently or whatever, they're everywhere. And then the uh, parents of the couple, their friends are all there. And the family's all there. You know, the great aunt Nell that needs a gift for somebody's wedding that's coming up and she's got all the money in the world, but she has no idea what to get them. Yeah. So she comes forth and produces a on-site painter at the wedding. It's such <laughs> but, a unique thing. I love it. It is. It's so crazy. I mean, you know, I tried print advertising for one month. And I know advertising is, like I said, you, I know you need to invest, you know, several rounds at it before you see the return and stuff. Yeah. But um, I got one call off that one print ad. But any wedding that I work, there's always half a dozen inquiries that come in, you know, usually within 24 hours or so. And it's still okay. new enough to people that they're excited to yeah. do like so- this. And, yeah. So, so let's talk like real, like fine detail here. So your mm-hmm. event is over. Um, I'm sure you have like business cards or whatever that people can pick up. Mm-hmm. Are people also kind of giving you their own business cards to, to follow up? Like, do you have like a pool of cards usually after an event uh, that, that you're no, responding not, to? Not so much. Okay. Really. Um, I, I dole out business cards while I'm working and, um, you know, I have my little sign there, live painting in progress, and yeah. then a little stack of cards. So they'll take them and, and um, you know, there's new followers and likers on social media after, after almost almost every wedding. And then, you know, people, yeah. uh, you know, I might have some brief conversations with some people while I'm working, you know, and parents, it's interesting, dads, a lot of times come up to me, oh, my kids are getting married, whatever, you know, and yeah. This yeah. is something cool and new and different. And, um, you know, if it's the country club crowd or whatever, then they're looking to be the first to blow something out of the club. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and I'm thinking of my own dad. It's just, it's, I mean, so I'm one of seven kids. Oh, my And God. The, the first one to get married was a huge deal. Yeah. And, I mean, it, they all kind of were. But, like, now it's like when the last one gets married, my dad, like, will do anything. Yeah. <laughs> So well, totally your target is he market. watching right now? Uh, Joe Vitale. He's not on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> but I will be sending him a link to this. <laughs> uh, I'll be sending my whole family like a, a package link to You're this because so I think kind. it's so cool. Thank you. Um, so it, it, it seems like the you're you're kind of having those conversations and creating those opportunities for leads and things. Uh, after an event, do you feel like you're – you're waiting for people to start the conversation with you or do you kind of have a to-do list of people to contact? You know, I usually, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of wearing out social media, but that's, yeah. this is perfect for that. It's so visual, yep. you know, yeah. and I'm working on getting videos done when I'm working and time-lapse videos and stuff too. Cause those, you know, video gets more traction for sure on social media, but um, I'll do a post right, you know, right after the, I leave an event and hashtag the heck out of it and, um, um, you know, tag the venue and the planner or whoever it is that was involved. And, and, um, it just worked. I don't know. There's, there's conversations that just happen. I know it's not, I mean, I feel arrogant, like, Oh, look at what I just do. And you know, this is all I, I just have to submit a post and, but it's, there's so many things. I mean, it's a new enough thing. People at weddings are always looking for something new. Yeah. It is old school. I mean, there is the filters and the hashtags and all right. the cool stuff that, you know, people are doing with lighting and the projection images and dance floor lights and all kinds of stuff with technology. Yeah. So I feel like there's a need. I mean, people, you know. No, it's, what, a, it's a very cool um, value. I think the it's social media cool phenomenon, value. people are so hands off and, and relationships, you don't even have face-to-face connection. And I'm, so I feel like this kind of, fits that you know it it feeds something that I feel like is a whole I'm getting all philosophical here (laughs) but I feel like as a whole we're kind of craving a little personal touch a little personal interaction so yeah totally totally I want to get to to Nick Rishwain's question um thanks to Nick and Nicole my attorney buddies who have been following and engaging along uh Nick asks does Cindy sell any art strictly online unrelated to weddings I think the answer is yes right Cindy I have just um, a couple of different prints. So at a fundraiser that I was at, I'm, 
always looking for the fundraiser, what to paint that's going to jack up the bids and raise the most yeah. money for the organization. So I live in Columbia, Missouri, and I was thinking of ways to do some local visual landmarks in a crazy format that seemed to work, you know, it got a lot of attention on social media. And um, so I checked with the organization and the high bidder and I ended up making prints of that piece. So it's just prints. Um, uh, who was it that asked the question? I'm sorry. It was Nick Rishwain. Um, yeah. It, so but Nick it sounds and, like you'll I mean, also do like people can send you a picture and you can paint it. And yeah, it's so it. custom. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's another thing as an artist, a lot of times you have to have an inventory of stuff that you pack up and take to a, gallery or showroom to display and mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of inventory most of my stuff I mean the two paintings that you may have seen here yeah um you know so it's that's another thing that's pretty amazing I don't have a lot of stuff laying around it's done on site it's delivered usually that night and on to the next one you know yeah so so viewers, forgive me. I'm going to try and, and get something to show up on the screen here. I want to show you guys what what Cindy has done for, um, was, was it the the Columbia, Missouri? or mm -hmm. um, I call it around town Como. Yeah. Um, so if anybody else wants something like this, especially for their city, yes. I, I know that a couple of my good business friends in St. Louis are dying to have something that's similar. Um, and you can go to tworooster.com and you can see pictures of her past work. Um, but I I'm looking for. It was in February of last oh, year. And yeah, is. Joey, I, you may have been hinting and leading me into a conversation there and I didn't catch on, but yes, thank you. <laughs> so to do, no, things, you know, let me see if I can find areas. this. Yeah. Because. Yeah, it's cool. And that, that morning I woke up and I, I was talking with my husband. I'm like, I got an event tonight. I just want to do something different. What do you think? And he's not artistic, so it's perfect to run some of these ideas past him. I said, what do you think if I had made all the buildings point to the sky, like a circular format and crazy colors? And he's like, yeah, sure, go for it, whatever. You know, so, and that one was done really quick. And that was a huge canvas. It was a Yeah, well, what's, what's so square. cool about it is that you're able to put so many landmarks into into one painting yeah and it, and because it's a painting here it is let me um let me share my screen with you guys i think you're really gonna like this um so here is the a picture of it on instagram um and who, who's the uh, the cat on the screen? That's my cat. <laughs> that's that's our cat, and um, she's always real real into what I'm doing, so she's a good little helper. <laughs> so that one was um, Roachport. That one is a cute little town nearby here. It's a great little winery community right on the river, and um, so yeah, that was that was uh, maybe the second around town layout that I did and that was maybe October or November of this year or of last year sorry um okay yeah and then there's one that the colors are a little bit crazier um from February of last year and I was looking online let here me too. see if I can I mean you guys can yeah. see I'm going to scroll through her Instagram so you can see a little bit more but it's just mm -hmm. it's so cool and this is from the uh uh so, which airport O'Hare of course oh yeah like there you go. such a little shout out shy town yeah i love it um but let, let me what was it oh and then you did the eclipse one yeah yeah that was cool like guys how cool is that um yeah so there's I, a big I, festival here in town and there was music and yard games and you know booths and food trucks and all kinds of cool stuff that was fun hot air balloons i mean it was such an amazing oh my gosh 2024 we're going to see all that again, right? I'm, yeah. I'm booking my room right now. I love it. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll knock that back down. But I, I wanted to show that to you guys because you, you get to see a little bit more sense of, of the type of artwork that she does. But if any of you are want to do something cool for your neighborhood or your city, mm -hmm. um, 
it's just such a cool way to fit so many of those cool landmarks and neat little things into one thing and, and have it be, you know, something that your whole community can enjoy. Um, just really, again, creative, very cool looking. Um, awesome. So, Thank you so much. Cindy, I, I, we have a little bit of time left. Mm-hmm. Um, because I am a lawyer, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the legalities of what you're doing. Yeah. And I know that we had a call maybe about a year ago now, mm-hmm. man, geez, mm-hmm. yeah. um, about, you know, certain contracts that you were working on and copyrights. And mm-hmm. it, it's, it's very likely that, you know, when you're making these paintings, you, you both probably need to some extent permission of the people whose faces are shown. Um, there might be certain copyrighted works within what you're painting, mm-hmm. uh, how how have you decided to kind of navigate around the legalities of things? And do you have any questions that you still don't really have answers to? Oh gosh, there's questions all the time. Yeah. I, mean, I continue to learn, you know, as things continue to happen and grow, I, I, there's, I mean, questions every day. I just need a little Joey Vitale in my back pocket. <laughs> Is there an app for that? We'll, we'll get there. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, you know, the fine print, I think, in the paperwork initially, and that's changed gobs. So, you know, and I'll lay yeah. it out in the fine print with my client, whether it's the parents of the couple or one of the couple, you know, the bride or the groom themselves that are hiring me. And I just let them know, usually there's 15, I say 15 to 20 recognizable people in the painting. And then, you know, I'll get other people in as I'm able to. You know, and I just kind of ask for them to review it all and make sure that, you know, whatever questions they've got, they're coming back to me. Um, Talking to a lawyer, let's see, that's probably not enough. Yeah, well, (laughs) so the the advantage that you have in your business, Mm -hmm. taking my legal hat off, is that if, as long as you do a great job, it, it's going to be hard for people, I think, to to be nitpicky around the legalities of it. Yeah, and, and I guess too, you know, the work people have kind of asked me. It's interesting the questions that I get when I'm working. Some people have asked me, um, "What style do you call this? Is it impressionism? Is it whatever?" Mm. And I guess it's mostly impressionistic because you, you can usually pick out, uh, you know, a dozen or so people. The who's who's yeah. doing what in the wedding based on what they're wearing and how I paint that or based on a hairstyle and how I paint that mm-hmm. or facial hair or, or glasses or whatever. Um, or maybe their position around the dance floor while the couple's doing their first dance. But, um, you know, it's not portraiture. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting every single little, you know, crease in their face and, right. and, um, you know, not painting logos on shirts and stuff like that. Right. You like that lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can keep the logos off the shirts. Okay, That's yeah. a good legal move. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just, you know, so it is It is just kind of a general, I'm trying to capture the energy, you know, yeah. at an event and, and tell a little bit of the story as things are happening. Um, so it's, you know, I'm, I'm talking with the venue ahead of time. A lot of times, you know, this is still new to them. So, mm-hmm. but they want to make their clients happy, especially in a wedding. So there's not a lot of, <laughs> not a lot yeah. of back talk I get from them. They're they're very willing and very accommodating to me coming into their space. And some of these are like historical places and you know, I, I want to make sure that they're comfortable with me working, you know. Yeah. So I show up if needed. I've show up, you know, and I've got a drop cloth I can lay out, but I mean, thank goodness I'm a neat painter and um yeah. you know, I I shop secondhand so that in case I do get paint on my outfit, it's not a big deal. But <laughs> I mean I it's uh those things I've learned too, but, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's worked out. So, uh, you know, usually the people that are recognizable in the painting is the close family members, sure. some of the bridal party. Um, you know, if there's kids running around way past their bedtime and they just, they put on such a great show anyway, and sure. add a great element to the painting. Yeah. So I get them in there. Um, you know, and then I think if I'm get, giving credit to the other vendors, you know, it's a mutual, high five yep. and you know let's let's keep growing for each other yeah okay I, I can't end the the conversation without asking how regional are you in offering your services and are you willing to travel to events mm-hmm. 
Yep. And um, yes, so um, I do travel. I've been in Chicago a couple of times, actually, last year. Um, had this great family that used me for both son's weddings and mama's birthday party. So wow. that was awesome. I know. Well, it's good were... to know I'm in your radius. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, so I live, you know, my town is a college town. So there's a lot of coming and going all mm-hmm. the time. And, and kids may, um, you know, go to school here and settle somewhere else. Uh, or maybe parents move here when their kids are going to school and it, whatever the connection is though, like I painted in um, Detroit last year for a wedding and there was a ton of people from my town there, you know? So um, there's some things I'm figuring out with travel, of course, too. And, and it's nice to oh, know sure. that, you know, what the connection is and how I found, found out about these, the clients and then yep. what connections are there. And then, what kind of safety net I'm going to have when I'm traveling, you know, are there people that are going to be there that I know, or, Mm -hmm. or I just really have several conversations with the venue ahead of time. So I know that I'm, you know, safe and not coming into a place that is full of a bunch of crazies and, you know, but there's some of that stuff too. I mean, I love to travel and I love to go places and see new things. And every event is, I mean, so totally different. I never know like what I'm going to get myself into. Um, visually it's, it's awesome. The spaces, decor is always done differently. The family, I mean, it's just, there's every single one is just mind blowing and amazing. Even the hands-on DIY stuff where all the family's making everything that you're partaking of at the wedding. I love them all, you know, but just being smart about these days and, and traveling some. So it's just preparing and planning and communicating, I think ahead of time, you know, but yeah, I'm traveling. I'm traveling. Anybody, anybody's interested, let us know in the comments. Um, So do you feel like, like two rooster is kind of where your dream for the company has been? Like, do you feel like you're kind of at that place that you've wanted to hit or do you, do you see the business as, growing to a place that's beyond where you're currently at? Like, could you have a team of people? Like, what do you want the business to look like in five years? I love that question. And it's totally in my head big time these days. Like, you know, if I'm booked for an event, if I'm turning away work potentially because I'm already booked for that weekend, then, you know, so that tells me there's still a need for this. Um, I'm considering um, consulting to other people that would be interested in, um, on-site event painting, um, teaching them what I have figured out, maybe shorten their learning curve, sure. um, but not being responsible for, right. you know, them directly. That's the direction that feels like if I, if and when I grow, that would be the direction is, you know, some kind of a subscription plan, online training, um, lots of phone calls, maybe me visiting an artist and working alongside them mm. for their first couple of events and just yeah. kind of showing them, you know, how to get the process going and how to get something on the canvas as quickly as possible so that it's done when it Yeah, like like a, like a I could even see that morphing into like a second painter type of thing where Yeah, collab, you have like two yeah. perspectives. Yeah. Could be cool. Mhm. For could sure. be really cool. Oh, and yeah. I never even thought about that side of the business before we started talking, but I, I mean, I share an office space with a wedding planner. Okay. Uh, shout out to City Girl Weddings in Chicago. And um I mean, they also have that hard limitation of how many weddings they can help with a year because of the size of their team and certain weekends fill up. Um, And so I I think it's, it's awesome to watch your business grow, to see it thriving for, for you to be an example of a, a painter that has been creative and has built a business that is, is being sustainable. I love it. I know. I, I, I love it too. (laughs) I had no idea that this kind of life existed as an artist. I always hoped maybe I'd sell a painting here and there, or I would do, I did lots of mural work on people's walls, you know, when that was big and kids rooms and stuff like that. So I think all of that just kind of lends to my credibility and people's homes and, and intimate spaces. And, you know, I'm taking care of their space as if it was mine. And so just, you know, trying to kind of let people know that I'm, Legit. And the business part, it's interesting, too, because as an artist, a lot of times, you know, people are hoping to sell some things and hoping to make it as an artist and still be able to do your passion. And um, 
I'm kind of fired up by the business part of it too. I'm ate up with trainings and yeah. podcasts and indie show lives. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just learning gobs and that's feeding a whole different part of it. So yeah. I feel like, I feel like I'm where I am meant to be right now and my maturity level and all of that is it, it's kind of come together my mom always said you know when in your 40s things just kind of come together and you figure things out and here i am well i was gonna say you don't look 40 but oh <laughs> <laughs> um but i but i think you're right no matter what age you are when you decide to to run with a business and own it you just learn at such an accelerated pace yeah it's, I mean, if there's a need for it and if there's, if the yeah. phone's ringing and you're getting the emails, I mean, figure it out. You know, there's, there's, that's your, the marketing part is, is working apparently, you know, if you're getting yeah. contacts. So dig deep, you know, miss so, sleep for a few nights and just go for it. <laughs> so I've got two questions that, that we'll end on. Okay. Um, both are, you know, let's say that you're uh, a, a a new coming creative came to you and just asked for advice kind of in general. First, what just in general advice would you give to a creative that is just starting out? And then mm -hmm. two, as a part of that question, where would you invest first as a business owner to kind of propel the business forward? So I think advice, I I didn't know about this line of work and somebody mm -hmm. approached me about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the past I've always taken that as, Oh, I'm flattered. I'll give it a shot. You know, I, I yeah. but I've never really taken the time to really figure it out as a business. Um, so I think, you know, just be open and have genuine conversations with people and um, seek hire, you know, like, spiritually and professionally and all of that surround yourself truly with people that are going places and listen to them and watch what they're doing. And, you know, I'm kind of blown away with some of the talent that I've been surrounded by at some of these events and window yeah. and, and, um, weddings. And, um, you know, I think how, how am I good enough to be mm. in this place? Then, sure. um, you know, I'm just a little town, small town Midwest girl, but it's, um, I'm doing my best to keep up with them, you know, and, and something must be working because they keep calling back. That's like, awesome. Pop out of my head. Um, <laughs> I know. And in terms of, in terms of investments, uh, I don't know, you know, yeah. I've got a little studio space and that felt like a stretch when I went for that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's more for storage of canvases for future jobs than it is actual workspace. Um, just kind of depends on what's going on at my house. You know, if I need a quiet yeah. place to go to, I found a great deal on a, on an office space and I love the building. And, um, so it's, it's been a good move and I can meet clients there to talk about projects and stuff if need be. Um, but I, you know, I don't know. I, a lot of people I know when they start a business, especially planning for it to be their full-time income, yeah. they're looking at ways to really jump started money wise and time wise and everything. And, uh, the investment part of it, I, um, it's, it's just me right now. Yeah. I mean, I might end up hiring for like assistant type stuff, you know, response to yeah. emails and maybe deliveries, you know, for commission work. I've, I've done that a little bit, hired yeah. our kid for helping with deliveries last Christmas, you know I mean? But that's not consistent. So it would be, you know, I've listened to some of the uh, live videos on um, virtual assistant. I can't think of her name now, but I know it's somebody that you'd interviewed in the okay. past. And so might be virtual assistant stuff, might be the accounting yeah. thing. Is that, that about my forte? So, but, so, so it me. sounds it sounds like you're really keeping like expenses low. Um, but and I, I wasn't necessarily planting the question, but I know that both of us worked with, you know, somebody who could teach us how to sell and what our target market was relatively quickly. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, I think that sometimes when people start a business, it's so easy to start Googling and reading books and to go from there. And, 
And that can be really dangerous because I think you, that's enough, you know, yeah. I think that you figured it out based on a Google response or something. Well, well, not only that, but it also can start to slow down your momentum and yes. you're consuming more than you're acting, Yes, which is a really bad place for a business to be when you're just starting because right. you need to be moving like crazy if you don't have any customers yet. Right, right, right. And I, I totally agree with that. And I think yeah. if I was not, if I did not have jobs on the books, I would probably spend some time just reading books and, and yeah, I don't even know, you know, taking some classes or something like that. And I, I'm at the point where I wouldn't mind taking some classes to polish a couple skills sure. and stuff. But, but um, yeah, that can kind of freeze you too. And then you compare yourself, which as a creative, that's just, yeah. I mean, so you know, I don't have time to second guess things. <laughs> you know, I'm nervous before every single event. I show up, you know, when I say I'm going to, I get my stuff set up and I just have to start painting. I cannot sit there and second guess anything. I just got to get going, mm. just plug in. So, yeah, yeah. I love it. Well, okay. Cindy, thank you so, so much um, for your time today. Um, I think that what you're doing is so cool. I really love chatting with you and learning more about the business and the art and everything behind it. And just, I mean, keep doing what you're doing because it's working. Thank um, you. And anybody who is watching, if you want to continue to follow her, um, Cindy's on a lot of places online, but it seems like the coolest place to follow her right now is on Instagram. That so works. it's it's just a two rooster artistry. Yeah. Yeah. T-O-O-R-O-O-S-T-E-R. So. Awesome. So, mm -hmm. so follow her on Instagram. You can see both the, the pictures and, and, and some of the videos uh, of how she's doing it. It's really, really cool. Thanks again, Cindy. Thank you. And, uh, everybody, have a great week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.